Why, hello there, and welcome along to your midweek fix of six. Uh, we've a packed house of singers, storytellers, and a bit of sociology to keep you entertained this evening. Oh, Got to be busy, all right. Uh, kicking things off, we've got two of the country's finest comedic actors, um, Norma Shane and John Kenny, are talking matchmaking. They sure are, and Jake Carter is bringing the festive field a smidge early this year with a summertime panto. That's oh, right no, he isn't. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, no, he isn't. <laughs> oh, yes, he is. Thank they're you. They're a little bit slow tonight. Yeah, they're just, we'll get the wheels turning. We're, we'll get there, we'll get there. Uh, he'll be filling us in on his latest Prince Charming role in just a little bit. Uh, serving up a double helping of dinner this Ooh. evening is Quan Jay Chan. Good to see you, Quan Jay. Guys, how are you doing? Uh, what, what are you making? So, I'm going to do some lovely little side dish of prawns. So, I'm going to show you that. And also, I'm going to do a black garlic ribeye steak with a lovely raw courgette salad. Beautiful. Mm. Uh, I won't be eating when I go home. Oh, yeah, spoiled, <laughs> spoiled tonight. <laughs> we really are. Oh my God, double trouble. Uh, joining Quanji in the kitchen is behavioural scientist Podrick Walsh. Podrick, what are we talking about this evening? Today we're going to talk about courtship, matchmaking, Love Island, and the psychology of it all. All of my favourite things. Well, you, and, and on our property night, because we're talking about matchmaking. Yes, absolutely. OK, cool. All the connections. Oh, look forward to that later. Uh, don't forget, if you want to get in touch with us throughout the show, a comment, question for any of our guests or any of the stuff we're talking about, then here's how you can do it. You can send us a message for free on WhatsApp to 083 360 6060. You can pop us an email to 6 at virginmedia.ie. And find 6 O'Clock Show on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram using the hashtag 6 VMTV. Now, our first guests this evening are well and truly two of the nation's best-loved actors in comics. Yes, and now they've come together to make up the comedy duo we didn't know we needed. <laughs> Please welcome Norma Sheen and John Kenny. Good to see you both. How are you doing, guys? Brilliant. How are you? Oh, very good. Very good. Better to be here with you two guys now? Yeah. Pardon? I'm better to be here with the two of you guys. Hello. <laughs> Six o'clock show. Is that where we Live. are? We are, we are. Are we in Dublin? We're in Dublin, the big smoke. <laughs> all right, all right, OK. okay all right. Living the dream, living the dream. You're obviously so busy at the minute, staring across from each other in The Matchmaker, John B. Keane's classic. But Norma, you've been flat out yourself doing your one-woman show for months now. What's it been like, you know, getting used to staring alongside John? Has it been nice to have someone opposite you again? Oh, sure, he's a pain the whole... <laughs> <laughs> no, Shirley was great. And Shirley is like, you know, you have the wall, you have the chips, you have the eggs, you have everything to surround you. But there's nothing like Dickie McDickie from Kerry, the matchmaker, to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to get on stage with you. What a nice little ego boost for you, John. I need every bit of it. <laughs> <laughs> for a young man that I am, as I was told this evening, as I sat down on the couch to sit down there, young man, I'm, that, that's I all need right. every bit of encouragement I can get. And Especially at this early stage of your career. Absolutely, Martin. Jesus, it's so hard to try and make a few pound out of it, you know, to mean, to keep the whole thing going. And to the grand, the younger crowd are putting me on the older crowd are putting me under the wings. Oh, yeah, oh you say, you. Yeah, you, so yeah. you've got a mentor in normal. Which is I have indeed. We yes, have I'm, indeed. I'm, I'm, uh, look, I'm, look, the matchmaker, we, you, we've associated you with it for, for, for quite some time. Really? But, but you, you know, you're suited to it because didn't you do a little bit of matchmaking before you actually start doing the John B. Keane play? Well, there were, there was th things did happen, I suppose, whether I was directly responsible or not, but the amount of people, uh, 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 things did happen. When my second part years ago did a show called One Hell of a Do, which was all about a wedding, yeah. we would pull unsuspecting people out of the audience, put them on stage and marry them. That was the thing. But believe it or not, the amount of people that got in touch with us and informed us at, that they had met at a show, <gasps> we put them on stage, and after that, a little spark happened, and before we knew it, we were, we were we'd be getting messages. We're getting married on such and such a date, and we met at your show, we were the bride and groom. Wow. That happened a good few times. That is so Who needs to avoid them? I think you, 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 you checked, in, you checked one, in with them now. Uh, they probably hate the sight of each other. <laughs> Maybe. Well, look, we couldn't, I can't, I can't. There's no guarantees. <laughs> Jesse, don't come with a guarantee. But anyway, and somebody rang me last, only, uh, uh, yeah, beginning of this year. Yeah. And they were to ask, could I just send a message? Because they had met at one of our shows mm. and they decided they met, they were the bride and groom and now they were the bride and groom for real. 
So that's, that's just, a bit of that, a that's brilliant. Love that. That's a bit brilliant. bizarre, though, isn't yeah. it? No grinder, Where tinder. No, what's the other one? Blender. Groper. Groper. Growler. Growler, groper. No, no. not familiar with those, I have to say myself, you but don't. you mentioned them. No, I'm, I can't say I'm, have, I'm a take You go on lady, very but... cam sites, don't you? You never went to ground. <laughs> I'm on the groper. civil ones. It's <laughs> not groper. It's not groper. It's not groper. It's definitely no, not no, groper. Grope. Definitely not. Grope him. <laughs> Grope. <laughs> grope, just grope. We would uh, like to dis disassociate ourselves from the word grope. Uh, <laughs> Norma, right. on the sub subject of apps, they've kind of taken over, you know, the whole world of matchmaking. You know, it's all happening online now. How yes. do you reckon you'd get on on the apps if you were to go on them tomorrow? Disaster. Would you love a, love a swipe? I feel like you'd love a swipe. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> I'd be an absolute disaster. Um, I, I just, no, I need to meet someone. I need to meet someone through someone that comes with half a CV. Right. You know, yeah. um, has to be a neighbour of someone or worked with someone or whatever. An endorsement. Um, an endorsement. Yeah. A recommendation. Yeah. I, I, look, do you never know? Look, I won't, I won't say no, no. I mean, maybe down the line if I murder my husband. And as Mickey Dick Mickey says in Matchmaker, you don't have to wait till the grass grows over him. You can get back out there. <laughs> um, because as Fanula Crust says, what did she say again? She said, there's no guarantee of courting in the next life. There is not, no, so no. you have to get your imprint here. You need, yeah. You're not going to leave this world without leaving. You want the imprint of a man on your body. Yes, that's it. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> anyway. Don't be keen. What a, an absolute genius. I mean, how did genius. they get away with it in 1960 when they wrote it? I mean, it's absolutely filthy. Really. And they, they've done another one. There was uh, some couple he put together and the child has red hair and looks a bit like the servant boy. Yeah, he doesn't um, look like the husband. And because sure. the husband was well past it. Right. But as the matchmaker replied, he said, look, he said, it is like this. He said, it doesn't matter who took the shot, as long as the white flag is raised and the goal is allowed. <laughs> keep, the, keep going. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God, it's just absolutely brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant. John, I have to talk about Father Ted. Obviously, it's a show that it lives in the hearts of so many, me included. Yeah. Um, you have an iconic role, needless to say. Yeah, the best lines of my life. But what, um, is it true that that was inspired by your own, like, local priest, you know, just because of people... The cinema piece, The cinema, yeah. of course, well, yeah. the cinema one. Yeah. I got the cinema one completely wrong, but I, I did have um, we did have a priest that ran the cinema, and we had the only cinema where that every time the poster came, if James Bond was on, and any time the girl in bikinis, they all the bikinis were gone. Right. They were all painted over with blue evening gowns. Okay. So there was no flesh showing at all. Okay. So there was a form of censorship going on, not just inside in the cinema, but even outside the cinema with the posters, you know. Jesus. But, uh, yeah, 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 it was real, yeah. We so what did you do in Father Ted then? Were you like... Well, I was this kind of cinema owner, but I was a bit more risky, actually, really. Right. I was um, I was out there pushing it. We right. were showing yes, a, yes, 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 a, dodgy, yes. a dodgy movie. That was one of them. But I thought you were talking about the Eurovision one. That's my... Oh, the Eurovision one was just... That's, nice. Oh. That, the lines and was that... Was that, that they all had lovely bottoms one? No, that's... No. That was the my, lovely horse, right? <laughs> my lovely horse. My lovely, lovely, lovely. But I had the best lines. Started. That was the best gig I ever got in my life, because the lad said to me, how to, you know, just go, and I just had no line to do, just do a little, come around, come around, talk like that, and just, everybody come down, shave a bullock and put it off, and just, and he sounds like, like he, play, he plays the turn up in the lead lad. <laughs> oh, we know <laughs> that. Moment. In fact, we know that's, all what about, about the lead lad. I do, enter, do enter for a few quid, but that's the same thing, actually, another great gig to get. I'm the love no cheese, though, there, in fairness. You know? Okay, you're the cheese. Okay, because we, we actually need, because you have worked together, hmm. and that was it. That was it. Probably the yeah, greatest accident. piece of work the two of you did. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah that was yeah. a moment in time, award winning. Yeah. Actually, it did win awards! It did, it did win no, awards! No, that, no. Yeah, so you... you were the big cheese and he I was, was the big turnip. cheese, he's the turn up. Yeah, okay. Fair play, Lidl. More for you. <laughs> <laughs> More heads. She, she must still be on the retainer, folks. She yeah, must still she be on. Sure <laughs> Look, we need to talk as well because, um, you know, speaking yeah. of cinema, the biggest cinema awards event is the Oscars. Yeah. You were there in 2009. Were yeah. you schmoozing with the A-listers? You were over there after making New Boy, wasn't it? Jeez, yeah, that was a while ago. No, that was a New Boy, uh, Roddy Doyle film. And... Uh, it was what? a short. I wasn't matchmaking there, no. What was I doing? I was just... No, I was just hanging out. just there. Just hanging out on the red carpet. But didn't you yeah. decide to do a lap of honour on the red carpet? I did. Where'd you get all this information? Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, I, I, I was like a bad smell. I didn't go in. They all kind of walked the red carpet and went in. And I decided to hang around because it was an anniversary year. So you had everyone from Sophia Loren, Beyonce, Anthony Hopkins, Brad Pitt, Angelina, the whole shebang. So I hung around so long that E! Entertainment thought I was a PR person. And they were like, could you bring over um, Anne Hathaway? So I was tapping the celebs on the shoulder, telling them where to go. I just pretended to be a PR person. Anyway, it as worked. you do. Did you, you get one worked. of the goodie bags? They always talk about the goodie bags every year and all the like the really expensive I swag something, they get. I got something, but I, it was such a bubble of, of, of madness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're in the Martin McDonough film, aren't you? 
Is, will, will you have red carpets <gasps> for that as well? Oh, should I have the two? Was I in that? I can't you were. remember. Did you just do a film for Mark Maitona? I could have, yeah. No, no, no really. Yeah, I'm very shy about this. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, the, the, the matchmaker will be on in the gaiety in September. So, have you guys started rehearsals and what have uh, they been kinda, like? Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Oh, really? like the, I mean, my rehearsing is just trying not to corpse. Every everything no. that comes out of his mouth is a double entendre, innuendo. It's like it's like oh, it feels hard to get him going. No, you get a poultice of a nettle in the posterior, or you put a bit of putching on the on the on the on the apparatus, and <laughs> and if it's not working, what you could do now is get a transplant from a young fellow going into the priesthood because he won't be using his and shit. <laughs> It's great advice, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I'm probably a bit, I'm, I am probably a bit immune to it now at this stage because I have done it before, you know. I think with, it's normal. With Mary, hi Mary, if you're watching oh, in. Yeah. And, uh, but uh, so yeah, look, it's good to give it another lash. I, I'm looking forward to doing it with Norma because look, it's like everyone else. If somebody else, I mean, there's you know, there's a long list of guys who've done the Matchmaker. Well, yeah. Mick Lally yes. has done it. Frank Des Kelly Kyo. has done it. Des Kyo. So um, they've all been, been in and out of it. It's been in existence as a piece for... The book has been there for a long time. The play is actually 21 years on the circuit this year. Yeah. And I remember when we took it to Edinburgh and uh, we were just thinking, well, it's always a good place because it's, it's just out there, it's international. And you, it, they loved it. Mm. I mean, critics yeah. loved it, everyone loved it. It's... it's and fair play to Michael a, Scott. Michael yeah. Scott is a genius. It's a piece he, about loneliness. He directs it really. and brings it together. Yeah. He does and a it's, lot of it. It's, it's a lovely thing about humanity and, and, and people needing to share their life with someone. Yeah, we're all lonely humorous. after COVID. We've yeah, all been but, yeah. lonely and no. no partners and no nothing. So it's yeah. about filling the gap again, you know? Yeah. But, 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 it, but it is, <laughs> it, it, it's the sign of a timeless piece that, you know, even though it was, it was based a long, long time ago yeah. and written a long, long time yes. ago, it's still making us laugh. Yeah. Absolutely, the, the line, it's the, the, it, the language in it is beautiful. Uh, that's all I can yeah. say. It is beautiful. It's bold. Yeah. It's keen at nearly at its best, I think. It's good. For as sure. Well, for sure. if you want to see it for yourself, it's running from the 12th until the 17th of September in the Gaiety Theatre. And tickets are available at ticketmaster.ie. You're staying with us. You ain't going no place. Yes. Food, are we staying for food? Oh, we're going to feed you. Oh, absolutely. And Kwanji has yeah. two dishes, so you're sorted. <laughs> oh. No pressure, Kwanji. Oh, <laughs> wow. Um, up next this evening, singer Jay Carter is dropping by the sofa. And Kwanji Chan uh, is making soy and honey prawns, and that's just for starters. Mm. So don't go anywhere. Back. Now, our next guest has more strings to his bow than the National Orchestra. Yes, he's a singer, dancer, actor and a professional Prince Charming. I'm surprised you didn't need your fingers for that. What a CV, though. Done. What a CV. Professional Amazing. Prince Charming. I'm obsessed. Please welcome Jay Carter to the show. Oh, professional Jay. bluffer. Professional <laughs> bluffer, yeah. Listen, but, but you're, you're right. Like, you are... Like, like I know, you played Prince Charming, you played mm. Aladdin. But you're getting set for a summer panto. Yeah, is this yeah. like Christmas come early? Yeah, definitely. And it's really annoying because normally in panto I'm Aladdin and I'm wearing no clothes and it's in the winter and I'm freezing. So it could be Aladdin and I'd be lovely and nice and warm. But no, I'm going to be dressed in loads of clothes and sweating. So it's the complete opposite <laughs> as to what's normally happening. But yeah, we're doing a summer pantomime. I think it's Ireland's first ever sum summer panto, uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And it's happening in the Liberty Hall. And we're starting on Monday, so yeah. Wow, exciting! It's brilliant, it's exciting. yeah. Uh, brilliant. Absolutely exciting. Like it, it like it, we lad, we checked. It's twenty-four weeks and four days. <laughs> we checked. He I just checked. knows I always off the top of his head. So twenty-four weeks and How four days. How many Mondays is that? That's normally the one that comes up on Facebook. You have like twenty Mondays till Christmas. Do you ever see that one? No. no. Yeah, I think Martin's I'm going to start account. doing that now, though, so he knows yeah. from now on. But, but, but because it is a summer panto, and we, and we normally associate with with Christmas, mm -hmm. do you have to make changes? Not really. Funny enough, when I got asked to do it, I thought, you know, it's going to be completely different. Like a summer panto, my panto is such a big Christmas tradition. Yeah, yeah. But when you actually look at the scripts and stuff, there's no mention of Christmas, yeah. you know. Uh, so it's it's not different at all. There's the same gags, the same jokes, the same innuendos. Um, it's a great script. It's very funny. And yeah, I never thought I would be able to do two pantos in a year, but this is going to be the first time. So uh, yeah, it's great. And you know, parents as well, they're all looking for stuff to do with the kids. At yeah. somewhere. Not every family goes away. So it's great to have something like that. What do you mean? And you are going away. Panto. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. yeah, come to Panto land. So uh, it's going to be great. It, it will feel a little bit different, I think, not doing a Christmas, but mm. I think it'll catch on. 
I think so. I think yeah. so. I'm and just going to be sweating. That's why I'm not. <laughs> air conditioning. Sweat. Just surely you can work something about taking the top off. Like, surely. Talk I to someone know. in there. I haven't been in the gym in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Here this is a family show, like. <laughs> Panto's yeah, yeah. family show. <laughs> <laughs> On Nash, though, Pantos, you know, they come with all, like, the pyrotechnics, the props, you're working with kids. Everything, Kind of yeah. seems like an environment where things might be able to go wrong all sometimes. The time. Have you had any Panto fluff-ups yourself? Uh, well, not me. Well, well, yeah, it was me, but <laughs> not my fault. I did a lot of them once, and actually last year, and the we had the magic carpets yeah. going okay. up on two kind of winches yeah mm -hmm. and one side wasn't clipped on <laughs> properly <laughs> so poor jasmine was on the floor and i'm here holding on <laughs> trying to sing a whole new world absolutely myself <laughs> and yeah so that was that was probably the worst thing that ever happened uh, but we kept going I probably didn't sing in key, though. Lapsided. I was absolutely... Yeah, yeah, you, were trying to, you were trying to pull her up. And it kept going as well. Like, they didn't notice. So, like, <laughs> it got higher and higher, and I started singing higher and higher, and I was like, right, lads, OK, this is enough now. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, that was the, the biggest disaster. But oh, thank well, God, wait, no one was hurt. Anyway. OK. Does that normally come just before the intermission? Uh, it was, it's, you know, it's the big thing in Aladdin as well. Oh, well I so know. We, we had to kind of make a joke about it, and poor Jasmine, she was not finding the funny side <laughs> of it. But, you know, <laughs> things happen, you know, it's live, anything can happen, and especially when you're working with kids as well, it's great. I know um, chatting to the cast, they, they got one show of Snow White at Christmas, because mm -hmm. it, it was this is the Liberty Panther has been run for years and mm. um, obviously it didn't it only got one show at Christmas so they decided to revamp it um, and brought myself in I don't know if that's going to be a good thing or a bad thing of course thing. it's yeah, going to be a great um, thing but the funny story is they, the kids play the dwarfs but they've got these dwarf massive dwarf heads on and one of the kids I don't know what they must have been smaller than normal the eye holes were a little bit higher right oh, no. so they said this kid just started waddling and I think Snow White had to guide him away from the, <laughs> the stage because he was literally about to fall no, so safe. anything could happen yeah. oh uh, I love it I love it enough. we know you as a singer obviously and you've proven yourself as a dancer on Dancing with the Stars <laughs> seems like you're trying to get into acting a little bit more can we yeah, see that I, a little bit in your I future I don't know how I don't know how to be honest um, I never really done any acting Acting classes in my life. It was just kind of something that happened. Uh, I was, I think I'm fortunate enough, enough to kind of look like Aladdin. So I've kind of been typecast the last few years. I've done five Aladdins now, but it's something I really enjoy. It's not something I ever set out to do. You know, music is my main passion. Mm. I, I love music and uh, we're currently actually in the studios writing my new EP, which is coming out at the end of the year. But look, if the right thing comes along, I I would never say no. I did an audition for Hollyoaks actually ages ago. Julian Benson, who was oh one of the God, judges yeah. on Dance with the Stars, he contacted me ages ago and was like, Jake, will you do this audition? And I was like, um, yeah, OK. I didn't get the role, obviously. Ray Quinn got it in the end, another fellow scouser. Hey, there yeah. you go. So, yeah, but look, if the right opportunity comes along, I'm, I'm kind of one of the people that I, I love a challenge. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Between, like Dance with the Stars, Hell Week, I kind of like doing random stuff. So, yeah, you never know where you'll see me. But, but, but normally when somebody auditions for a programme, you're, you're then in their thought process. So well, you never know. It, yeah, you never know. Never you know. Just never know. I just uh, like acting the maggot most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you will be acting the maggot uh, on stage because um, after you're done with, with the panto, uh, I think in the autumn, aren't you taking to the stage Mary Bird? Yes, so we're doing a comedy play as well. Yeah, I'm kind of, I'm turning into a bit of an actor, to be honest. Yeah. I need to start focusing on singing a little bit more. <laughs> it's yeah. like you're just realising now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. What's going on? <laughs> Uh, no, so we're doing Dirty Dustin. It was meant Which... to happen last year, and obviously, think it got pushed back. So it's now happening in October. Uh, which is going to be great. I've never actually seen the show before. It's a show that's been around for years. I read the script on a flight back to Dublin a couple of months ago, and it is hilarious. I was actually like wetting myself on the plane. I think the fella next to me was like, there's something wrong with this fella. Uh, so it's a very funny script. Um, and I'm looking forward to that. It's all over Ireland. I think there's 24 yeah. dates in total. We're, we're literally everywhere. So it's going to be great. Something be different again. I've never done like a comedy play. So yeah, it will be uh, different. Absolutely. Okay. Flexing all the creative muscles. This is it. Yeah, and then we're well. gigging on Friday as well with the band. So it's it's kind of, Where are you gonna of be? everything. We're in Ballycotton in a lovely venue called Sea Church, which is I know it. Church. It's a stunning yeah. venue. It's amazing, yeah. And they've, they've some amazing acts in there over summer. Um, so we're there this Friday night and I'm really looking forward to it. I was down there last week. It's stunning. Fuck. Like, it's a, it's a long drive. I was thinking, like, I was going to Cork and there's, like, another 40 oh, minutes no. of back no, roads. No. But once you get there, it's it's absolutely beautiful. So we're looking forward to, to that on Friday with the band and then 
tech rehearsals on Saturday, so it's going to be a long weekend. Fantastic. Busy, busy. For anyone yeah. who's looking to get tickets, it's the Liberty Summer Panto. It's Snow White. It takes place from the 11th to the 17th of July, and tickets are available on libertypanto.ie. All right. Thank you so one. much for We're feeding us. you as well, yeah, so it seems. I'm starving as well. well I don't know, like we'll prawns, but I like steak. Uh, but we're heading over to the kitchen now. Uh, where, uh, Quan Jay, uh, John Kenny and Norma Sheen have already positioned themselves for a little bit of food. I know, uh, yeah. And Quan Jay, uh, soya and honey prawns. I know, yeah. So I'm going to do like a little soya and honey prawns that you can have a, like a starter or even a side to a barbecue, you know? So All right. I have some um, prawns here that which are marinated with a bit of soy sauce, okay? And a bit of uh, garlic and a small bit of chilli, okay? And we're going to throw some lemongrass in there. So I'm just going to let the wok heat up. Okay, so I have a bit of oil in there, heating up the wok. I cut some lemongrass here as well, just to just get the flavour inside when I'm frying it off. So I peel the outside of the lemongrass and just get the really rough out of it. So the soft stuff inside, like a bamboo. So uh, that's pretty lovely. Now that's kind of getting a bit hot now. So and you need a hot pan for this. Need a hot pan, yeah. So I'm gonna throw that in there. Prawns don't take long to cook. They only take like a few minutes, you know. So. And I, th I think that's a mistake we make. We just cook them for too long and ruin Same with broccoli. Do you remember we thought broccoli had to <laughs> yeah. be cooked for 40 minutes when Un it came to Ireland first? Until they get brown. And Everything had to go in there. <laughs> Grey, yeah. 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 So I throw some lemongrass in there, OK? In the meantime, what I'm going to do is uh, throw a small bit of soy sauce in here as well, just to give it a bit of... You can smell that. Beautiful. Oh. So I'm going to add in more olive oil, because I want this kind of, like, to be a nice kind of... Do, 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 Saucy. Do, you, do you think that we should, like, when, we're, when it comes to cooking, especially nice dishes like this, that we should, you know, pay the money and buy a nice olive oil? Yeah, you should, yeah. But get the extra virgin one, you know? It's really nice. It's, uh, it's worth it, you know what I mean? Definitely. So... And we have some really nice kind of rapeseed oil as well that you can use, like, mm -hmm. if you can do that as well. But um, definitely go for the more favourite oil. So you can see it there coming along. So in the meantime, I'm going to throw some... Honey in there as well, okay? So just time to throw a bit of honey in there. And what I'm also going to do is put some balsamic vinegar in there. So it's like a... You're a, all right with all of this so far, guys? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. All good. All, all good. good, all good. So it's like a dressing. So it's like a yeah. warm dressing warm inside, thing. you know? Are you allergic to anything other than me? Yeah, mm -hmm. other than no. prawns. <laughs> <laughs> I'm allergic to anything. I'd eat, absolutely, I'd eat the table for you. Yeah. <laughs> I'd eat the plate. I'd I, yeah. I yeah. eat no. stones. I'd eat stones, yeah, sure. We had to so, eat stones when we were So up. I got this idea of, uh, you know, the garlicky prawns that they have in Spain, like in Italy yeah. when yeah. you go, like, you know, that's the kind of idea I got but it just turned it into kind of like an Asian kind of version of it. So here we go, you can see, throw a bit of tomatoes in there. So basically it's like a, a balsamic kind of honey dressing. With yeah, and you use the basil as well, which is... Oh, yeah. Yeah, sometimes you don't, people don't put basil with, with prawns, you know, you tend to go, when you're using soya, you think, you don't think basil, you know, you yeah. go to think like coriander or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. but what people you know. don't understand is um, that there's a Thai basil as well that's very, very mild, you know? Right, right. And sometimes I kind of get through it, you know? Right. Now, that's it. Like, this is lovely for, like, a barbecue on a yeah. side dish, like... And then, later on, we're going to go on... Uh, so there's going to be a ...and do a lovely piece. steak as well with that, you know what I mean? And a bit of salad. Do we have to share this with... You can nipple on it, if you want. You Listen, know? Oh, yeah, it's you, for everyone, is it? You guys are nearest to us, so you're getting first dibs on all of that. So, yeah, yeah. we'll just... We, we might have been sampled uh, anyway, now uh, that we're here. We're here for sampling, aren't we? You are here oh, for have sampling. have a taste, yeah, have a taste. taste. You taste. know what, I'm going to have sure, a little see. taste as well. You see? It's yeah. always a good sign when the chef wants to eat his own food. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Well, that's a beautiful starter, isn't it? it? Yeah, mm. not too fussy, spot on. But oh, you it. enjoy your cooking, don't you, John? I do, God almighty, too much. <laughs> no, I, love, I, do. I love eating it. I love cooking. But I, I actually, I find when I, I can get lost in the kitchen and I could just spend hours inside mulliking around, as I call yeah. it, because oh. I love it. I, I find it kind of therapeutic like, to go cooking and, and yeah, yeah. you know, I'm doing stuff and tasting yeah. things. And you're useless. I gave up a few years ago when COVID hit. I just told the children cook for themselves. That was the end. <laughs> <laughs> if, you want, if you want to get to the other side of this, fend for yourself. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and they're still there, so that's all right. Guys, you better come over here because we have... <laughs> we'll run out, run out. We give them oh, time to run across the studio. Uh, there's some more coming later, so there's uh, some more. While, while the rest of them tuck into what's left, <laughs> um, <laughs> we'll be back in a few minutes, because still to come, from the cavemen to the Love Island villa, we're looking at the evolution of love. We'll see you back here in a few minutes.
Welcome back. Now, every summer, millions of us tune in to watch Love Island sun kiss singletons in their quest for the ultimate holiday romance. Uh, so here to break down our obsession with reality television and the romantic adventures of this year's Islanders, it's behavioural scientist, Paul Drake Walsh. Hi, Paul. Good to see you, sir. How's it going? So it's been 30 years, I think, since MTV launched like their own first reality TV show. And like, it's just become this like obsession for people. It's like one reality show after another, like this conveyor belt, endless choice. Why are we so obsessed with them? Like, I, I remember the first Big Brother coming out and I actually think it was one of the things that picked my interest in psychology at the start. Because it was just these normal people going into a normal house, doing normal things, and you got to watch them 24 seven and see what happened. As time goes by, we start to see it emerge into this almost like, people who we could relate to, now it's it's a little bit of escapism. And an escape is like a bit of escapism that we can tag on to, particularly in a summer like this, mm. where it's a little bit rainy. We were just talking about how it's, it's often quite rainy. It's complete escapism. So we're detached from what is going on in our normal time. And we get to have a little peek into what's going on in other people's lives. So reality TV gives us that insight. It's, it's seeing normal people doing what they, what they normally, what we would think normally do. Mm -hmm. Like from an Irish perspective, we've got literature all the way back to the Valley of the Squinting Windows, which was this idea of, of us being really intrigued by what's going on behind the door of other people's houses. So it dates back to the 70s and 60s in the US and in, in, in the UK, but more recently we have Love Island. And that's the real escapism. Mm. Kicking in. You're telling us we're the two of us are obsessed. Absolutely obsessed. Is it just that we're nosy? <laughs> There's, there's an element of nosiness, but I think for about eight weeks in the summer, we all become amateur behavioural psychologists as well. And we start to uh, look at why people do what they do when, when they're put into particular situations. And there's an element of the producers having the opportunity to put people into situations and seeing how they respond. Now, the fact that it's put into an island and it's put into a warm, tropical island. And look, let's be honest, it's not Love Island, let's do in Varna. It's <laughs> not, it's, and it, it's like, Casa Amore is not the shifting shack. This is like completely detached from what we usually have. So for us to, to be able to switch off, anyone I talk to about Love Island says, they understand that it's not, it's called reality TV, but it's not a true representation of, of reality and dating. Yeah. It, is, it is constructed, but it helps them to switch off. In fact, during lockdown, there was a thing called narrative transportation, where we would watch TV in order to be put into another setting. So we would, because we couldn't travel anywhere, because we couldn't go anywhere, rather than watching a story, what we would do is we would watch something based upon where it is happening. Mm -hmm. So we might watch something in Spain or in South America or Nordic Noir, not necessarily because of the story, but because we're transported there. So what better place to be transported in the summer than to a poolside with beautiful people and sunshine knocking around. So mm. there's an element I'm of I'm gonna watch it tonight now in my swimwear. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I'm sure do I'll tonight. do the same, but... I'll, there'll I... be no pictures, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> as much as we love the escapism, though, Patrick, we love the drama as well. Mm. I love the drama. And in we particular, do. we're getting it in spades this year with Ek and Sue, my queen, queen of chaos. <laughs> yeah. Like, what, um, what motivates someone to apply for a reality, reality show and just go on and wreck everyone's head, essentially? Do you want the real answer? I, when, yeah. you're, when, you're look, when you're trying to understand human behaviour, I think it's really important to first look at what's their motivator. Not, rather than looking at what their personality type might be, okay. try and think about what's motivating her in order to cause that chaos. So when you look at somebody like Ekans, you're going, wait a minute, if I'm causing this amount of chaos, I'm getting more screen time. I'm getting more, uh, more opportunity to win, more followers. You know, so there's a real motivation there to cause that chaos. The attention that you get from the other participants and the attention that you get from the audience, particularly when you're looking at, at you know, potential influencer contracts afterwards can only be a good thing. So always look at the motivations behind why she's doing something like that as well. That's what I've been saying. She knows where the cameras are. E every time she's doing something, she's, she's a soap night. actress. Yeah. She knows. She she's knows a something. soap actress. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. In Turkey. In oh. Turkey. Uh, <laughs> that's she's not like her. Carnation Street. Yeah. Like. I, think, I think our last role was a serial killer. killer. <laughs> in Cardstown, flat out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, look, in Love Island, they are, they're put into a, a, a manipulated setting and it's intense, mm -hmm. you know. So, you know, normally if you're in a relationship, it's a couple of dates, mm. it's 24-7. Yeah. So 
the environment they're in leads them to fall in love. So do we need environments? And are there environments that will make it easier for people to fall in love? Yeah, and I wouldn't... We're using that word love really loosely here, OK? But actually, when you were talking earlier on, John, about the one hell of a do and people being brought into from the audience onto a stage, and we know from the research, there's a really interesting experiment called the Shaky Bridge Experiment, OK, where they asked men to walk across a bridge that was over a canyon that was made of wood and it was really, really shaky. And at the end of the bridge, they had a woman ask them, do you want my number? Would you like to go on a date? And those who had walked across the bridge and who had their heart racing, who were nervous, who couldn't attribute why their body was telling them they're in this state of arousal, said yes. And they were asked to rate the girl who, who, who they got the number from. And they rated them much, much higher. So they, they attributed this feeling of fear as actually love. So when you're talking about the nerves that people had coming on stage in front of you and being questioned, mm -hmm. they might have felt nerves, but in fact might have attributed that to love. So you see that in, the, in Love Island all the time. If those couples start breaking up, they're going to blame you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not, I hope not. But the thing about it is... I was afraid, that's why I said I do. <laughs> we, see that, we see that you asked about the environments that can help people pair up and, and to, I suppose, promote courtship. And we, we know that when people's hearts are racing, when they're sweaty, when they're, they're in this high arousal level, we, we know that they're more likely to misattribute themselves to love or attraction or falling for somebody. And then you think about places like nightclubs. Is and you look like Karen and Jake dancing on Dancing with the Stars? Who knows? Oh, yeah. oh, it could be. <laughs> You're put into a situation and what happens is you have nerves and it becomes... No, obviously that's true love, Jake. I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying that. Karen's probably watching us. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it certainly heightens those emotions and it really makes you question. So take a nightclub, for example, where it's loud music, there are crowds, your arousal levels and your heart rates are going to be higher in that setting. So people start to look at each other differently and mm. become more attracted in that type of setting. What's interesting, though, and, and that can be replicated in Love Island, but when we start to pair up with somebody, we start to move into a different, look for different types of settings. We look for those low arousal, romantic, dim lit, dimly lit, cozy, they, that oxytocin, the love hormone releasing kind of environment where we can cuddle up and cozy up. And they try and replicate that in Love Island as well, be it with your partner or with somebody else. Mm. But on that though, you're talking about, you know, some of them are in like kind of longer lasting couples on Love Island, but they're obviously facing their kind of biggest hurdle now with Casa Amor, you know, where new people come in, they're sent to a new villa. It kind of looks like Dammy and Andrew are looking around, yeah. maybe weighing they, up their they, options. They, and Jax is the same. And Jax is he the same. He needs to cheat to know if he really loves Paige. Which is yeah. a, a statement yeah. I won't even try and psychoanalyse. But I suppose, what are the reasons that, you know, they're in there thinking, oh, my head might turn? What are the factors? that kind of Look, cause that. When it comes to, the, the, to head turning uh, in, in that type of setting, mm. one of the interesting things is we know all about our partners. We know all about their, their positive parts, their flaws, the reality of being with them all the time. When you have something like Casa Amore and there's a novelty, there's a shiny thing, there's a new person, always sees the positives of them. Because think about how we present ourselves to others. The first thing we do is pre we present all the positive things about ourselves. When, when somebody's introducing themselves on reality TV, they never say, God, I snore at night. I'm kind of really lazy in the morning time. I'm really grouchy come lunchtime when I'm hungry. They don't say that. They always put forward their best foot. So when we see a new person coming in in, in Casa Amore, mm. all you're seeing are the positives of that person and you're reflecting and comparing to the person you previously were with and you just knew them a bit better and you knew their flaws as well. Mm. Okay, simple. Grass that. And he out. knows what he's talking about when it comes to love because he's just newly married! <laughs> <laughs> we had to get it in. Congratulations. Sorry. He knows what he's talking about. Come, come he knows what he's Thank talking about. Yeah, yeah. And, and your good lady is? Amy. Amy yeah. O'Dwyer. Amy, how you doing? Yeah, she's uh, happy, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you'll find fingers out when you go home. Yeah, <laughs> fingers crossed. Yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah, it was a great day. It was the one day this summer where actually it didn't rain. We had it mostly outdoors. Fantastic day, so tired afterwards. And so ironic that I'm talking about love. <laughs> well, <laughs> enjoy this wedding. You, you are the expert on it. Congratulations. Thanks so much. Thanks, 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 Good to see you. Up next here on Six, we're returning to the kitchen where Kwanji Chan is serving up rib steak with a South Asian twist. Yeah. We'll see you back here for that after this one.
Yes, welcome back. We've a load of mouths to feed this evening. So Kwon Jae Chan is serving up a second helping of dinner. Oh, yeah. This so, time, what is it? It's mm. steak. So we're going to go very simple. Uh, you can do this on a barbecue as well. Um, I'm still waiting for the weather to come in, Martin. Oh, what yeah, do you think? Keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> <off. laughs> Get so, on your knees and pray. Really, yeah. So um, ribeye steak. Ribeye steak is great for barbecues. And it's better price than your normal fillet or, you know, a sirloin steak as well. And they're uh, delicious. I, I, I'm and they're often delicious. told that ribeye steak is the, sh is the chef's choice. It is the chef's choice, yeah. Uh, would it be your choice, though, Martin? Yes. Think? Yeah. Love ribeye. <laughs> of course he's going to say that now after he said it. <laughs> no, no, but uh, that's yeah, the steak I would go for steak. if I was eating steak in a restaurant. So black yeah. garlic, puree. So you can get, um, you can use kind of smoked garlic if you don't get black garlic as well. So black garlic is very good and high nutrients. It's a fermented garlic. Some soy sauce in here. So basically we're marinating the steak. And we have a little salad going on there. Just be careful with your fingers there. Norma, <laughs> <laughs> you're stressing me out. He said, yeah. he said this knife them. was worth 450 euros. Oh my God. Know, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Some mad uh, weapon. Keep an eye on it. <laughs> <laughs> has the world... So how, is your, how are things with Karen, Jake? We're all good. It is true. No, 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 no yeah, it's, it's not just the... <laughs> the like just the just to reiterate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I have some uh, sesame oil, uh, olive oil, and I have some uh, black pepper and the steak. So this is a great way to marinate and steak. So just put it in a little bag. You can leave this overnight as well if you want, you know what I mean? What's and... the optimum marination time? Oh, okay. If you're doing a fast, half an hour, 20 minutes, like I'm going to do it straight away. But Minimum, if you want, like, yeah. If you want to leave it overnight, it's, uh, yeah, 10, <laughs> 15 minutes is fine as well. These are not really thick. So just rub on it. I also left the steak out to room temperature. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is what I yeah. for about a good half an hour as well. So really hot pan. So I'm just going to turn this up. Geez, you're flying. I'm, I need to keep up. <laughs> <laughs> Norma's trying to take your job. Yeah, how, how was the prawns anyway? So look, was it good? Oh, yeah. I'm starting to feel guilty now. So I, I did leave some, yeah. but I have. Yeah. It was I a good balance. Gorgeous. Good balance of flavour yeah. in there. Isn't it? Yeah. Great. Well, sure, he used to work at the Cliff House, did you? <laughs> <laughs> That's it, yeah. Once upon a time. Once upon a time. So, yeah. here we go. So, steak in. So, here we go. Oh, oh yes. Thank God I hear this here. Yeah, God, Thank God I hear this here. Yeah. The pan is hot enough. Those, yeah. I, 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 the electric cobs, they're a nightmare for me, because anytime I come across them, if you're staying someplace in a, and there's a, you have a kitchen where you're staying, and they have an electric hob, yeah. Ah, sure, I'm, I'm running out the door. I'm going down to the chipper. <laughs> I, just drove, I drove me half of it because I love food. Are you a gas man? You a gas I man? I am, and gas I love man. cooking on gas. Those bloody things just get the temperature it. right, I think. Yeah, you know, yeah. When you're just used to just turning up the gas or turning it down, it's... Yeah. But this, yeah, I, I Although, prefer gas, that, but this that, is that, good. That gives instant heat as well. Yeah. yeah, but then again, I'm a bit of tech... I can't even work a remote for the television, so anything <laughs> that's digital <laughs> and has buttons... I know. Forget about it. Gone. It has to have a knob. Forget about it. Give me a knob. Stop knob, yeah. Oh. Enough your knob no, no he, he, he broke his computer earlier <laughs> no, I have to have, turn your knob to bob Yes. This is it. Anyway, Sanjay, what are you doing with that question? Yeah, I don't worry about you. It's getting corrupt. This is like a panto here. Oh, no, it isn't. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, yes, it is. There were the days when you had knobs and radios, you see. No, see, you were. And there was this DJ, I was listening to one that were in the States one night in St. Paul, Minneapolis, and this guy came on the radio and goes, Hey, go. All right, guys, turn your knob to Bob. <laughs> <laughs> so it became a catchphrase, you know? Brilliant. What a catchphrase. Turn your knob to Ooh. Bob. So, so, poor Bob. OK, so you've got your courgette. <laughs> so I have the courgette. So what I did with the courgette is... Uh, <laughs> no, I, better, I better take that knife away from here. I'd say, I'd say wash that, and, um, what say. Yeah, and um, I sliced... I've done it with the peeler, your yeah, favourite yeah, thing, yeah? yeah, yeah and yeah. then I slice it into little ribbons. Okay. You can use that little spiralizer as well. Yeah. I can never find one when I need one, you know, so... Yeah. But uh, courgette, um, peppers as well. Yeah. So I'm going to fire a bit of onions in here. Love onion. Radish, OK. I like my salad kind of raw. I, I like eating vegetables kind of raw-ish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The ones yeah. that you can eat raw. Yeah. Well, uh, there's something about you. I started eating a salad every day now at lunchtime over oh, the really? last five months. Really? I made a promise I'm just going to have a salad. And all. Of, I think my whole taste, everything changed. Yeah. Because I cut out a lot of stuff and I said, I'm going to eat the raw food during the day for lunch. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, geez, the flavours of salads now. Yeah. Start looking for me. It's like I've never tasted before yeah. in my life. I think... Uh, something happened to me over the last... And I always love food, but definitely the thing for raw food is just... Yeah. It, okay. it, it kind of cleanses your palate, you know what I mean? And uh, it kind of like, opens up your pores and you can flavour a lot more. more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I can see the steak here. I'm not too worried about... What, what have you added to the salad? OK, so I have a... I'm, I'm making a little dressing. So yeah, soy so sauce. Dressing? Um, 
sesame oil. You can get the, the measurements online, okay, and the... And the... There's your olive oil. Yeah, olive oil in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of twist this around. At the same time, I'm going to just give it a turn. I like my steak kind of medium-ish, you know what I mean? So that's the best way. So I'm going to give this a little stir, okay? Yeah. And this is my little salad. It's like beautiful salad. Oh, it looks so fresh. And is that meant to feed all of us? It is, yeah. <laughs> as long as it feeds normal. You have to fight for it. So I have some cashew nuts as well. Yeah. He's okay for nuts? Cashew, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. Cashew yeah. nuts, okay. And did you, you didn't roast them up, no, they're just straight. I did, yeah. You, you need to roast yeah. them. Up. What oh. I did was I bought them kind of roasted, salted already. Right, yeah. Very simple, instead of doing it in the house, you know what I mean? So yeah. Yeah. I don't know what we're going to serve this like for you. Oh, yeah, sure. Look, we got three plates. Would you look after the presenter? Yeah, mine is. No, well, please. I mean, look at We're like the kids in our And you can help yourself. We'll be up with our plates in a few minutes. <laughs> Fanula, yes. did anyone get a close up of your divine skirt today? Of my divine skirt? I think you did for Oh, Jen, it has pockets! <laughs> it's just a, it's like a trousers. trousers. Oh, very Cape. cool. Gorgeous. Where did you get that? Are you allowed to say? It's thriftifying. They've dressed me for the week, so it's all second hand. Oh. All second hand sustainable. You're fabulous. Wow. So here we go. Anyway, steak. It's Looks great. Just, just pretend this off the barbecue. I like using. Um, uh, smoker barbecues, but if you're using a flame barbecue home, it's fine as well, okay? Mm -hmm. So, beautiful. So what I'm going to do is, um, I'm just going to slice this sideways. So see here, lovely oh. medium, oh. medium rare. Yeah, so that's the way I like it, so uh, if you kind of like it so a bit different, well done, well done, like, you know what I mean? You can do it differently that. as well, so... Yeah. I'd say if you're a vegetarian, I'll change the salad. That salad doesn't need any, so you don't mind me Sorry, there's a salad here as well. Of course. So we're going to do... Mm -hmm. You know what? I'm going to serve her on the board like a... Oh, yeah. 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 I'm going to serve her on the board. So. Okay. Uh, people... I was in a place last week and they, they, put, they throw it onto a fucking stone for me. A place. Oh, that would be... Or a rock. Was it a slate or something? <laughs> that would be booking. Booking. Yeah, yeah. Booking. yeah. Uh, sorry for that. Booking. Apologies. <laughs> they, put onto, they put it onto a fucking rock for me, didn't All they? Right. Uh, Fiona got in touch. I have a question for John. Could we ever see him take on a panto role at any stage? Never say never. <laughs> <laughs> no, you couldn't swear in the panto. You want, to, you want to check the dialogue first with me and kids, you know what I mean? You know? <laughs> Anything could come out of my, uh, my, my mouth, dear darling, you know? No, I don't think I'm a pantomime, man, really. No, no for you. Never say never. I could be Bob. Could be Bob. Yeah. I could play a dame. Could I, I, no, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not the dame yeah, type either. Like a great dame. When I was younger, when I had a figure, <laughs> and I had hair and teeth and stuff, yeah. <laughs> at my age, no, no, no. <laughs> Santa Claus, maybe. I could play Santa Claus if I got a false beard. That's about it. Uh, oh, yeah. guys, thank you so much for joining us. Oh. Talk into that. Uh, that is all we've got time oh, for, folks. Really good, uh, we'll be back tomorrow when we chat with Sky News you presenter Kay Burley. Very exciting. Uh, don't forget Love Island. We were talking about it earlier yes. with, with Podrick. It uh, continues tonight at 9, Virgin Media 2. Uh, and straight after, you get another chance to see the brilliant documentary featuring Aslan. This is for Ukraine. Look, have a great evening. We'll see you tomorrow at 6. Bye, guys. Till then. Bye-bye. Oh,